Praise the Lord. Turn with me in your Bible to book of Isaiah, chapter 22. Randy, he keeps praying, brother. I'm not afraid to preach what he says. scripture and then we pray. I want to pray first. I won't be honest with you. I feel different than I did a moment ago. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know if I hurt your feelings in the physical lesson. I don't know. I don't know. Let's pray first. Okay? Um, that's over. This is a completely different lesson. It won't be long in case you thought I was long winded. This won't be that long. Jake won't leave the piano. He'll stay right there. It'll be that short. But I want God to have his way. I don't want any hindrances or distractions. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for, for your presence that we've felt here today, Lord. I thank you for the word that has already been shared. Lord, I'm praying that you anoint the rest of the word. I make sure that it's your word and not mine. Make sure it's your message and not mine, God. Let it be Holy Ghost inspired and anointed, Jesus. Lord, whatever disturbance or whatever that is, Lord, I, I pray that you quench it, God. There's only room for your spirit here, Lord Jesus, only room for your will. I don't, I refuse to pretend that there's something else here, Lord. I want to address it, God, because your word is important, Lord. I will not let it share time with anything else. Your word is the priority, God. You are the authority in this house, Lord God. I rebuke any distraction and hindrance in Jesus' name. Find it, Lord God. Bless this word. Bless this service, God. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Verse 3 says, All thy rulers are fled together. They are bound by the archers. All that are found in thee are bound together, which have fled from far. You can already tell we're talking about a bad situation. Verse 4, Therefore said I, Look away from me. I will weep bitterly. Labor not to comfort me because of the spoiling of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble and, tre and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains. And Elam bear the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen and Kerr uncovered the shield. And it shall come to pass that Thy choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. And he discovered the covering of Judah, and thou didst look in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. Ye have seen also the, the breaches of the city of David, that they are many, and ye gathered together the waters of the lower pool. And ye have numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. You may be seated. We're going to talk for a few minutes about drastic measures. Drastic measures. Here, they were in dire straits. And that last verse is what I'm going to focus on. They were taking their houses apart. And using the material to fortify the walls of the city. It reminds me of the Netherlands when they rebelled against Spain. And the Netherlands is a low-lying area, floodlands. And what the, what they did to in their only hope of pushing the Spaniards back was they purposely opened the floodgates. They purposely flooded their land. 
to create a distance that Spain could not cross. And it worked. They were able to secure their independence, and to this day they are their own country. It was the beginning of the end of Spain's dominance of that era. But, in consequence of that drastic measure, to this day the windmills are still there in an attempt to keep the water pushed back. Once they let the flood in, it's hard to push that water back out. Especially when you're low lying. Gravity works against you. We often panic in desperate times. I could talk to you about politics and how they use that as leverage and how they've manipulated fear and have even, in my opinion, have created situations just to cause fear to push their agenda. Brother Alverson's message Wednesday night was profound. He was talking about when your destination becomes greater than your journey. No matter what you're going through, where we're going is bigger than what we're going through. Jesus is worth the effort, is what he was saying. And I kept waiting for him to make the, the, the analogy, the connection to, G, to Peter walking on water. Because that's exactly what happened. Peter was fine as he was looking at his destination. But when he got his eyes off the destination and started looking at the journey and the size of the waves is when he began to sink. And so often... We are like Peter, and we'll get our eyes off of Jesus, and we'll look at the situation that we are in, and we'll start to panic. I'm not here to condemn nobody in their fear. I'm just addressing it. When the doctor's report comes back, stage four, we panic. We start making end-of-life decisions. We start to immediately regret all the things that we didn't do. And we start to live as if we're dying. But technically, we're all dying right now, as if you were to think about it accurately. You start dying the moment you're born. The people here again, they were tearing down their houses. I wonder what parts of your lives have you given up in fear? I picture, as a kid, I just picture my dad taking off parts of the living room and taking up there. My house is now a wreck. My home is destroyed for the sake of calming my fear. And that is what's happening in the homes across our country today. Lives are destroyed. Livelihoods are being ripped apart in the name of calming a fear. And I'm not even talking just about a pandemic anymore. Anything these days can cause a, a pandemic. Anything these days can cause panic. All it and paper products. Who knew that in 2019 we should have been buying stock in toilet paper? <laughs> this time last year was a 2019 was the last normal week and nobody knew it. What would you have done different in preparation? Looking at it now, what have you done to your life since to fix it? What have you given up? What drastic measures have you taken to change it just to try to maintain some normalcy in 2019 and 18? Our church, I make us wear this, not because I believe it's effective, but because it makes people feel better. The governor is releasing the requirements. But I want folks to know that are still worried that I'm doing everything I can to make them feel comfortable. And it's a small price to pay for me. I don't mind it. I've gotten used to it. It's a small matter. We can still worship with it. Amen. But there are some folks that have locked themselves in their houses. They haven't been outside to see their family. Nursing home people are dying, not from a disease, but from loneliness because they can't see nobody. They're tearing down their homes to fortify the wall. What parts of our faith have we sacrificed just to keep the floods at bay? Just to keep the enemy, whatever is causing us. 
And I'm saying this because right now, some of us may have problems with jobs. Some of us may have problems with money. Because I don't know how, I don't know what your status is right now. Maybe you've got family that are sick. Maybe you've got family that won't reach out to you. Christmas was wild to me. There was folks that wouldn't go visit each other for Christmas because they were worried about a disease that has a 99% survival rate. each other just so we can feel better and feel safer. What are we doing to our lives? God was talking to them there through the prophet and he didn't mind their fear. He was upset about their drastic measures that they went to. Because the very next verse, I stopped at 10, verse 11. Oh, forgot about that. Yeah, pretty title. Verse 11, ye made also a ditch between the two walls for the water of the oak pool, but ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. When was the last time you went to God first? Or how many times we come to the, and I'm not knocking nobody, I'm only speaking of mindset. How many prayer requests do we get about our doctor's report? Why don't we get more prayer requests about the symptoms? We pray after we go to the doctor. Brother Simmons used to preach real hard. Don't pray in the middle of the car wreck. You better pray for your trip before you get behind that steering wheel. Amen. When was the last time, God, was your drastic measure? Before you took a second job to pay bills. Before you tore your life apart to protect. When was the last time you took your family together in the living room, joined hands, and prayed to God Almighty? Because He is the creator of all things. Yeah. He is the drastic measure, God. You don't get any bigger than God. You don't get any stronger than God. There's nothing mightier than God Almighty. I believe God can give them favor and, uh, and can tell them where to go. I believe it's biblical. As a matter of fact, before a leper could be allowed back into the, co to the community, he had to go see the physician to be clear. Jesus told him that. When he healed the lepers, go show yourself. But the lepers went to Jesus we talked about the woman of issue for 12 years. That's a long 12 years to wait for somebody to walk by with the answer. In her condition, she may not have been in a situation. We don't have that excuse. The man who sat by the pool for 38 years waiting for the waters to be troubled, we don't have that excuse. Come on. The waters are always troubled. Yeah. I want to know why we won't come to an altar. We'll sit right there and feel sorry for ourselves before we come to an altar and give him everything. Yeah. We'll, we'll party all week and feel unworthy to come. And then we'll just sit there and say, oh, if only things were better. How about we get ourselves in the troubled water and we make them better? How about we make them better? Go ahead and play something I told you I wouldn't be long. Y'all know me. If I talk longer in Sunday school, I don't preach long. <laughs> I'm talking to you about drastic measures. I'm not rebuking your fear. I'm rebuking your panic. I don't have answers for Kevin's aunt. I've been talking to his cousin and texting her and calling her. I don't have any answers other than God is still God. Amen. And if we preach a funeral, he's still God. Amen. You know what's going to happen a hundred years from now? Neither one of us is going to be here no more. But there will still be an eternity that matters by what we did in the panic right now. Your eternity depends on how you handle your drastic measures. Will you find a place to pray? Will you address the issue with God right now? If you're worried about your health, if you're worried about your finances, if you're worried about your family, it's time to take drastic measures. Let's pray. Hallelujah.